Good morning. I'm sorry. So sorry. Um, it's just another one of those glitchy mornings. So we may be moving uh, to a new platform because <laughs> for some reason Facebook is uh, giving me all kinds of grief lately and I apologize deeply. Um, so I'm going to wait a minute. I'll see if I can get the music going while you're all getting on. I'm just going to leave this. And we'll wait a minute and see if people can get, get on from the other video. I don't know. I couldn't stop it. And so it was going, but it wasn't working. So again, I apologize, but I'm glad you're here. I know people will make it over. And, uh, and we may be talking during Christmas, moving to a new platform. So, But it's good to see you. It's good to see you, Esther and Cyril. It's good to see you, Rosetta and Minda. I am Michelle. I'm glad you're here. Renetta and Siege and Gail. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good morning, Les. I'm glad you're here. And Susan. Uh, I'm glad everybody was able to make it over. Good morning, Debbie. I'm glad you're here. And Vinette. Uh, uh, good morning, Good morning, Betty, again. <laughs> yeah, I missed all these greetings on the first round. So so as you're coming on, I'm going to invite you to turn to Psalm 103. Uh, this morning is on gratitude, uh, which is what, where we're going to dwell for this week. And then um, beginning with Advent, I, it's so hard to believe that Advent is almost here. We're going to start um, in the book, uh, Pauses. Remember, we started with pauses, um, pauses for Advent. Uh, so that's what we're going to start with Advent. But today, uh, this week, we're going to remain in the theme of gratitude. And we're especially looking this morning, uh, if you want to turn in your Bibles, we're looking at Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And as, you're, as people are coming on, I introduce myself. My name is Cindy Stauffer. And I am blessed and grateful and honor to be the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And so I'm glad that you found us here this morning and and we're going to jump right into scripture. So our scripture this morning uh, comes from Psalm 103 verses 1 through 5. Psalm 103, 1 through 5. And this is what our scripture says this morning. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. So our devotion today is entitled Grateful. Uh, if you're able to, you, maybe you caught a little bit of, of uh, my tribute to God be the glory. But this is what our devotion says today. We often ask our kids at dinner what one thing from their day that they are thankful for. They're young, so you can imagine there's a range of answers. Sometimes they are thankful for things, a television show or their toys, sometimes for people, sometimes for things that don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Often they struggle to come up with something because they can't remember the day behind them. In large part, that's because of their age, but it's also because 
The discipline of remembering for the sake of gratitude is exactly that, a discipline. And it doesn't always come naturally for kids or for adults. Some of us find it hard to feel grateful and others of us find it easy to feel grateful, but maybe aren't grateful for the right things. Psalm 103 is a call to remember, but it's also a call to gratitude. The Psalm begins and ends with a call to praise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. There's always something to be grateful for. Like my children, we can think of the things throughout our days, the meal you shared with a friend, the new book you just received in the mail, the freshly planted flowers, the sunshine, or the rain. In all of these things, our feelings of gratitude should be channeled to the giver of all good things. And since we know there is a giver, we're to bless the Lord for all the things God gives us. In her book, Growing with Gratitude, Rediscovering, Rediscovering the Joy of a Thankful Heart, Mary Mahler describes gratitude this way. It is an intentional mindset that stems from the fact that since we have indeed received Christ Jesus the Lord, since we have indeed received Christ Jesus the Lord, are walking with him and are rooted and established in the faith, then we will overflow with thanksgiving as a result. To be grateful, we need to notice the good things we're given and then remember them. I have friends who have a gratitude jar or a wall of thankfulness in their homes and with each answered prayer, a reminder of God's care, they write it down and place it in the jar or on the wall. And at the end of the year, they read every instance of God's benefits toward them. What kind of effect do you think this has on their souls? It's tremendous. David in our Psalm is calling us to remember again and again all that we've been given. But there are some days when we don't get lunch with a friend or when we don't have extra money for that book. Days when it rains when we needed sun or is dry when we hope for rain. Sometimes you can't think of anything to add to the gratitude jar. Other days, life is going so well that we could fill our prayers with thanks for our daily blessings, but forget that there is anything beyond the material and relational joys of our life right now. At both those times, when life is hard, and when life is good, you need to be reminded of the big picture benefits that are always true of God's people and are always to be the greatest fuel for your gratitude. In our Psalm, verse three, it says, he forgives all of your iniquity. He heals all of your diseases. Verse four, he redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. And in verse five, he satisfies you with good, renewing your youth like the eagles. These benefits are true all of the time. When the daily benefits can't be seen and even when they can, we can keep this long-term vision in view. In Christ, God does forgive your iniquity. In Christ, 
God does redeem you from the pit. In Christ, God will one day heal you of every disease and may even heal you in this life. In Christ, God crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. In Christ, God satisfies you with good and gives you renewed energy like the eagle. He, God has done these things for you. And so, are you brimming with gratitude for them yet? So I'm gonna stop there. The, the devotion actually goes on. I'll, I'll continue on tomorrow. Um, but I've been thinking a lot about gratitude. And you know, the truth is, I know we do this a lot in, in November. We need to be doing this all the time, all the time. What does it mean for us to be people of gratitude that is so rooted in our being? You know, you've met those people. There are people in, our, in the world that you meet them and you think, wow, they just see the world um, not, not through rosy lenses, but they are able to just be grateful in uh, the things that they have in all circumstances. But they're that way because, um, not because they were born or, or geared to be that way, but because they have been intentional in their very walk. So what are the things that we can do? What are the things that we can do with our family? Um, if you're a parent, what, what are the ways that we can teach our children or our grandchildren about how to be people that are truly grateful? Um, and it requires a, a discipline. And so I'm gonna encourage, I really love the idea that came out of this, um, of the act of beginning, and I'm gonna start it today. Um, uh, beginning to write down those things and and putting them in a jar or putting them up on a wall or somewhere where you're going to be able to see and be reminded of them. It's one thing to just say the things that you're grateful for. And I think that's a step. You know, we said, you know, five things. Um, but what if what if we began to write them down so that they become a reminder you know, write them down, put them in a jar, write them and put them on the wall. Um, maybe you have a gratitude tree for Christmas. I don't know. I don't know what creative way you can do this, but I do know this. When we are intentional in seeing the world through the lens of gratitude, through the lens of God's abundance, understanding that God it has been working in and through our lives, that God is working for good in all of our lives, that there are blessings, even when it doesn't feel like it. When we are intentional about doing that daily and seeing it, being reminded, and that was what our devotion was, being reminded of God's goodness. Um, I not Let me not forget all of God's benefits. When we are reminded of this over and over again, I think it changes um, the way, not only how we see the world, but how we interact with God's world. And we need more of this in our world. So much more. Because we are counteracting, we are being countercultural to the world around us. So my friends, today, how are you going to be reminded? Um, I encourage you, just to incur, uh, maybe maybe you do it with your children or your grandchildren, or maybe maybe you just do it for yourself or with a group of friends. But how will you be intentionally uh, reminded of God's goodness in your life this day? So let's enter now into a word of prayer. Good and gracious God. We acknowledge that too often we have forgotten. We have allowed the world around us to overwhelm us, to speak words of uh, chaos into our lives, to speak words of doubt and fear and anxiety, 
But God, that is not your voice. And so we come this morning longing to know you more. We come this morning be, and we are reminded that even though the path may seem dark today, that your blessings are still there. Help us to be people of gratitude, that we may offer the same blessings that have been poured out on us out into the world. Lord, I lift up each person on this call. I give thanks for them, for their witness, for their love, for their time um, that is dedicated each morning to gather and to know you more. Be with us this day as we navigate the challenges of our daily life. Help us to see the world uh, through the lens of grace and mercy, through the lens of deep gratitude and praise for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in us and in the world around us. Lord, we lift all of this up to you as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> nice, Vinette's sharing some of her things. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what are some of the things that, that you are grateful. We're going we're gonna to stick in gratitude for this week and uh, know, my friends, that God loves you. And so do I. So I will see you back here tomorrow morning at 6.30. Uh, have a blessed day.